Good morning. Uh, here's Lucinda Gabriel from Denmark. So live from Denmark today. Uh, we are Sunday, October 21st. So today I want to discuss the question, why are your prayers not answered? Because often I get that question from people. They write me and, you know, I'm praying and praying and praying and my prayers are not answered. So there's different reasons why our prayers may not be answered. And I think probably, I don't know, over a month ago, I did do something like this. And the thing that I mentioned back then, which I'm going to repeat again today, uh, back then was one of the reasons why your prayers are not answered. If you are, I'm going to call you an unbeliever, unbeliever in the sense that, uh, you know, you're, you're, you don't necessarily believe in Jesus Christ from the Bible yet. I'm going to say yet too, because I'm, I'm hoping that what I'm going to teach you is going to open you up to this and help you see that it's the truth. And so one of the reasons why our prayers are not answered sometimes is that we're not praying to the right person. So if you're praying to angels and you're praying to saints and you're praying to Mother Mary and you're praying to all these other, you know, people, and that is not necessarily Jesus or the Father, uh, your prayers may not be answered. Okay, so that's one of the reasons. So I have to mention that to start off. And another reason why your prayers may not be answered is because of sin in your life. So this is the subject I want to tackle today because, you know, a lot of us think, well, you know, I don't sin, I don't rob, I don't steal, I don't kill. Uh, you know, if you look at the Ten Commandments, a lot of us don't do those things anyway. So we think, well, I'm a pretty good person. And when I compare myself to the neighbor, well, you know, I'm, uh, I don't do this and I don't do that. But uh, I came across a text lately that uh, we are kind of studying here uh, in the school. And so I wanted to share what I'm reading in this text about what sin is. I know it's not only what I'm going to read to you, but it certainly opens up our, our, our eyes and our heart to what it is that we may be doing that may be not helping us in our life. And we have a call to be holy in our lives. So if, for example, if you, uh, if you haven't repented and been baptized yet, and I'm not talking about being baptized as a baby, I'm talking about being baptized later on in life, like, you know, um, when you realize that you are not perfect, okay? So um, anyway, it's important to repent and to be baptized. So keep this in mind that what I'm going to say to you, I'm going to read out a list of different kinds of sins that we should be looking at in our lives. This is what the Lord said. Uh, if my people, which are called by my name, declares the Lord, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So this is what the Lord is waiting for us, for us to humble ourselves and to change our ways. And he calls them our wicked ways. And, um, and sin needs to be forsaken. We need to give up sin. Jesus came here on earth to save us from our sins. So you need to know what sin is. And the beautiful thing is, is that when you get baptized and you repent from your sins, is that it's really forgiven. It's really washed away in the water and you come up, you're a new person. Satan wants to keep you down and he wants to keep you feeling guilty about everything you've done and didn't do and stuff. But when you get baptized, you are freed from this. And this is the beauty about it. So uh, let me just go through a little list here of what that can be and what it can look like. So uh, now let us take our sins one by one and deal with each transgression separately. So anyway, I'm just going to read them out to you. Have I forgiven everyone? Ask yourself that. Have I forgiven everyone? That is the biggest thing. Because if we're holding on to unforgiveness. It says, you know, in the prayer to our Father, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who are trespass against us. So the Lord will not forgive you if you do not forgive other people. So it's very important for you to forgive other people. And so is there malice, spite, hatred in our hearts? Do we hold on to grudges? Are we angry? 
Are we, do we lose our temper? You know, uh, are there any feelings of jealousy? Um, do, are we impatient? Are we irritable? Uh, do we get annoyed or are we sweet and calm under all circumstances? And, you know, this brings us to a point of holiness. So if, you, if you've already been baptized and you're already feeling this, you know, this peace, because that's what the Lord brings you is peace, you, um, you, can, you can feel good because, you know, this is the peace that the Lord gives you because he forgives you your sins and you wash them all away in the water and he sets you free. But you still are held to be holy. That means you're still held to a level that you need to continue. It's like you've, um, when you get baptized to me, we're discussing this lunchtime with a friend. Um, it's like you're doing this big cleanup in your house, right? You do this big spring cleanup and everything is immaculate and proper and clean. And then you have to upkeep it. So after you've been baptized, you've been forgiven your sins and you are really free. You need to upkeep. Uh, all these the sins and so you want to be calm and peaceful and loving and caring uh, and generous and considerate towards your brothers and sisters and that's what it's all about so ask yourself do I get angry um, you know am I spiteful do I have a bad temper uh, are there any feelings of jealousy uh, you know am I offended easily when people fail to notice, you know, what I've done and am I easily hurt? Is there any pride in my heart? You know, do am I puffed up with pride? Do I think myself better than somebody else or do I think myself even lower than somebody else? So it's it's important to look at that. Have I been dishonest, you know, in my business? Uh, you know, did I pay my taxes or, uh, you know, um, what else? Uh, if I gossiped about other people, you know, that that is a sin to talk about other people. Do I slander somebody else's character? Uh, do I criticize unlovingly, harshly, or severely? Are we always finding faults, looking for flaws in other people? Do we rob God? Have we stolen time that belongs to him? Has our money been withheld? You know, like if we have an inspiration to give money to somebody, to do something good for somebody, have I done it? That's robbing God. If he tells me to do something, I, I, I need to do it. I need to listen and obey. Um, are we guilty of the sin of unbelief? In spite of all he has done for us, do we still refuse to believe the promises of his word? Have we committed the sin of prayerlessness? Are we intercessors? Do we pray? How much time do we spend pr spending on our knees, uh, praying for ourselves, praying for other people? Um, are we neglecting God's word? Are you reading the word? How many chapters do you read a day? Or you know, are you studying the Bible? Uh, how much time do you give him per day? Are we burdened by the salvation of our souls? Have we a love for the lost? Are we, do we care for other people? Um, yeah, are we ashamed of Jesus? Are we ashamed to talk about it? So these are all the different things that can be going on with us that make it so we don't um, we don't feel like that we're being listened, you know, by the Lord. Uh, have we wronged somebody else? Have we failed to make restitution with somebody else? Are we worried? Are we anxious? It's sinful to be worried and anxious because you're not trusting the Lord. So um, all these things we need to look at. Do we feel guilty? Uh, do we have, you know, lustful thoughts about other people? And anyway, so the list goes on and on and on. And we really need to take a look at ourselves and see where we are in our lives and are we are we doing our best are we good towards people have we done good towards the past and know that the enemy just wants to make you feel shame and guilt about your past what you did and didn't do and that is why it is so important for you to um to repent to repent towards the lord and repent your sins and you know, know that he's the Lord and Savior and be baptized. And when you do that, you let all that stuff go in the water. And when you rise up with Christ, you're free. You're free from the guilt and the shame of your past, whatever you did or didn't do. And then you can start new. He gives you a new heart. So that's very important for you to, to, uh, to look at. 
And, uh, and when you have repented, you've been baptized, you're free. Now you can move forward and it's just upkeep. And you have a desire in your heart. And the thing is too, like it gives you a new heart and the laws are written on your heart. So you know when you've done good and you know when you've done bad because you feel condemned in your heart when you do something bad. And that is one of the gifts that he gives us is this sense of, uh, of this consciousness that we we kind of, you know, um, how would I say, erased over the years. So with our baptism, we have this new consciousness. So when we do something bad, we know it's bad and we can adjust automatically every time. So that's what I wanted to share with you today is that Jesus loves you and he came here to save you from your sin. He didn't come here to judge you. He came here to save you. And if you don't understand that, I really encourage you to read the New Testament and to understand why he did what he did. And, um, you know, his love is great. His love is great. And don't don't feel condemned. If you feel condemned, it's not by God. It's not by Jesus. It's really the enemy that condemns you. It makes you feel guilty and shame and all this stuff. And that's not what Jesus came here to do. So that's it for me today. I wish you a wonderful day and I'll catch up with you again next week. So take care and have a wonderful week. God bless you and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.